Good morning students. This e-content study material is designed to support the BA English students. Today we are going to learn a chapter in Social History of England, the development of education in the Victorian England. Now we are going to see this chapter in detail. This chapter consists of the importance of education, different kinds of schools in earlier period, development in secondary education, educational act, test act, study of professional courses, introduction of competitive examinations, establishment of board of education, and conclusion. Now, we are going to see this chapter in detail. People of England didn't realize the importance of education. There was no uniform system of education followed in England. People followed the different systems and standards of education in England. So there was development of education retarded. There were many kinds of schools in England in the earlier period. There were public schools which provided education at a high charge for the upper and middle class people. For the benefit of the poor people, the National Society, under the guidance of the Church of England, conducted schools where they had to pay only small fees. Roman Catholics were forced to run their institutions as they were shut out from the government schools by law. Some of the schools were well conducted but very expensive. Some of the private schools were cheap but were not managed properly. Most of the private village schools were far below the standard. There was no central authority to control the educational activities. Primary education to poor people was neglected in England in the 18th and 19th century. Now we are going to see the development of secondary education in England. There was a remarkable development in secondary education. Kings and town corporations founded the public schools. Duke of Wellington believed that most of the Englishmen were the old students of these public schools. But these schools were known for their indiscipline. Dr. Arnold, the great educationist, headmaster of rugby school and the father of the poet of Matthew Arnold, brought a great change in it. He emphasized the study of religion and introduced the monitorial system for maintaining discipline among students. Moreover, he introduced organized games. This system of education meant for the overall development of the personality of the students, and this system was universally followed in all schools. After passing, the reform bill in, in 1867, there was a change in providing the uniform system of primary education in England. Gladstone's Education Act. Gladstone's Education Act of 1870 made provision for the establishment of school board in every district. It was established to provide education for children between the ages of 5 and 12. This education was cheap but not free. The Education Act of 1870 was followed by many of the acts which brought about revolutionary changes in the university education as well. According to the Test Act of 1871, the study of physical sciences were introduced. New universities were founded to encourage the study of professional subjects. 
sufficient attention was given to women's education also. Queen's College and Bedford Colleges were established for women. Schools, colleges and universities were open for both boys and girls and men and women. Gladstone made the competitive examination the normal entrance to civil service. Elementary education made a remarkable progress in educational system in England in 1870. As a remedy to the defective educational system in England, the Board of Education was established in 1899. A great step was taken towards the establishment of a uniform national system of education by abolishing the, state, uh, the school boards and compelling the private agencies to raise up their standards of education. I hope this e-content study material will be helpful for the students to learn as well as to have a better understanding of the subject. Thank you.